For the latest top tips, reviews and advice, please subscribe below. Hello and welcome to At Wars Outdoors with me, Mike. Today I'm giving you a bit of a kind of like a tutorial video, a slash sort of advice video about how to pack away a kind of traditional kind of porch awning. So with me, I'm kind of using the Quest Leap Kensington awning just to kind of show you the process, but it's something you can use on any sort of brand or even make, and most designs tend to be there or they're about the same. So we've done a pitching video, which you can always check out as well. Um, so that's worth looking look at. We've done almost two different versions of it. We've done one with kind of the panels in place and one with them out of the place, depending on which way you want to kind of pitch or necessarily, as we do now, pack your awning away. So first thing you want to make a consideration of is do you want to remove the side panels and the front panels um, when you're ready for when you want to pitch it or do you leave it in place and pitch it as one so that's pretty much a down to yourself. If it's like a slightly windier day what I would recommend doing is leave sort of what I call the main kind of four place port corners in peg in place which is the front two the back two but then also to be fair the storm straps to stop it sort of blowing around so all I'm going to do initially is kind of just unpeg all of the sort of side panels at the base for the time being. Leave the front one in place for the time being, like I said. So you can just spend, obviously if you're on, uh, I will say if you're on grass, it makes life a lot easier in comparison to say hard standing, but you kind of get the idea about it. So, once we're in this position here, what we can then look to do depending on what's going on with the wind. If it's a bit windy, I'd probably drop it down a little bit um, and then keep the storm straps in place. Because it's not windy today, I can remove the storm straps. We can put those away. And for the time being, we're just gonna lay them down just there. So once you've kind of done both sides, it then enables us to have access to. So to be fair, what we're gonna try and do is almost do the same kind of methods we did pitching just in reverse. So for starters, what we do is unclip all of the kind of the front poles. So again, just push those directly back in. And then also the adjustment that goes across the width of it as well. So again, we can just undo, undo that. So if it's nice and loose, easy to move and bring out as we need to. Oh, that's a Titan. There we go. So at this stage here now, we'll take the eyelets off the top of it and just kind of then bring the actual pole itself off there so that's now loose and again we'll do the same with the front section so that can come nice and neatly off flip that up and what I might do actually if we bring the poles in adjustable it means it makes a little bit less of a fixation point so we've got a little bit more wiggle room then suddenly on the actual uh, awning itself so, one pole, feed that back in, clamp that in place, and then flip that back over. Now, it's up to you kind of where for you decide to remove the front parts itself. I personally find for removing it, it's probably worthwhile, just because you've got less anything to snag, and it kind of droops it down quite nice and neatly. It's so you can insert uh, beforehand so it's in place, but for me, I think from a packing point of view, it's quite easy to have just sort of out the way and then that sort of the front of it hangs nice and loose. Normally you tend to have a separate pole bag so you can obviously feed the poles directly back in and by just getting kind of your two initial ones out of the way it gives a bit more shape to the pole bag so it means it's easier to slide necessarily back in. From here what we're going to kind of do is kind of um, work our way over from one side to another so we'll kind of bring out the right hand pole then the left and work ourselves into the centre part itself. To do this, it's maybe worth looking at probably opening rather the side door. We'll get into the actual awning itself. Now most awnings, depending on what they are, will have a leg pole at the back. So we'll access that initially. By having the door open a little bit, it does help to obviously help with a little bit of airflow. But for me, yeah, it, it can be, make it a little bit less stuffy inside. And as you're taking stuff down, what you find is actually, to be fair, it will kind of allow the air to escape quite happily, rather than kind of get bunched up into a big bubble. So there's a one back pole. Flip 
with the back pole, sometimes it's easier just to kind of take the tension out of the sort of vertical length. So pop that up to the top. It almost sort of hangs in many ways. And then providing you're tall enough, you can take it out from there. And then we have our second pole. So again, what we'll do now, once we've kind of got the back sorted, we'll then move one side, then the other, and then work into the actual middle itself. So same process reserve, reserve, take the clip out towards the top, feed that down, out of the hook, and then we go there. We'll at this point here, take the leg down in terms of its length. So again, bring that almost all the way back up to the top, unclip it, and then also adjust the kind of middle section of it. We'll feed all these directly back into the actual pole bag itself. So now we can sort of undo the button clip, slide that pole back in, take this part, because we've also took that main kind of front pole in, makes life a bit easier. We'll leave that kind of central pole, kind of the kind of little we'll cool cross section, should we say. We'll leave that in place, just keep it up as we see. We've still got the front sort of pegs up, the material's not necessarily on top of us as we're taking it down, so it still keeps a bit of shape to that sense. And we'll take that adjustment out, pop this back in, that clip can then come out. And then we're gonna do the leg section again. Drop that leg down, or bring it, bring it directly up, probably. Clap that in place, support it, undo the buckle. And again, undo the brush, the adjustment in the, in the side, pop that back in. And then from there, we can take that section out. So we're left almost with, like I said, almost like a kind of a cross size kind of scenario. Uh, we, at this point here, it's quite handy just to, again, we'll take the cross section out, take this vertically down, unpeg it, come out, zip back up, and then slide it off the rail itself. Almost by lifting the pole up a little bit from the other end, takes the kind of resistance away, which the fabric's kind of pulling it down. So we got that there. We'll then drop the leg down itself, all the way down to the bottom. Okay, we can lift that directly up. If need to be, drop it to the floor. And from there, we kind of go directly back in. I mean, it's a bit tricky, you can't overly see massively what I'm doing, but. So, like I said, because we've got those, got those points still kind of in place, it's not completely on top of me, but it gives me enough room to kind of happily find the exit. So at this point here, I quite like to just get all the poles sorted so we know that's one thing out of the way, and it kind of then leaves us a nice sort of space to so concentrate on the actual canvas itself. Again, just feed those back in. So that is the poles out of the way. So from here, We'll just kind of undo the front points so we've got no kind of actual tension at all in the actual fabric. It's really nice and loose. And just double check you haven't got any kind of pegging points still in place because as you try and remove it, it's just going to stop you from doing that completely. We'll zip the panel back up because I want to put this back up again with all the panels in place. And from there, you can really nice and easily just kind of feed it off the rail. What you sometimes find if you leave the grips in place, they can kind of catch occasionally on things like lights. So it's always a consideration. With anything like a second pair of hands does make life a little bit easier, but I think from a packing point of view, it's pretty easily done to be fair. Now we're gonna flip this on its roof. Like I say, it's, it's down to you whether you just decide to remove the kind of brawling bracket pads or whether you prefer to 
kind of leave them in place. If you're pitching it again for me, there's no harm in leaving them in place. Just means they're ready and again, you know they're in the right position afterwards. The panels I prefer to kind of fold into the side. So again, you want to create a kind of a, a dead rectangular shape. So feeding that in and pulling it so. From here, what we want to do is basically go into three folds. So you want to kind of measure the bag. Often the kind of the bags itself tend to be around about the same kind of size of the pole bag. So it's always not a bad idea to kind of get the poles next to it and use that as a bit of a size guide. But then we're going to feed this directly on top. This is where having a nice sort of PVC ground sheet makes life a lot easier, but you're not kind of folding it directly onto the grass. And as you kind of pull it around, again, you're not having that worry about getting mud stains or grass stains or anything on the actual awning itself. So what I do is pop the bag at the end and we can almost directly roll it into the bag. Now it depends on the bag in terms of what kind of size or shape it is. This is kind of more like a very kind of boxy bag. So you could go down lines of kind of rolling it. But for me, I want to kind of do sort of folds. And I would say you always go on the solid caution, go a little bit smaller than you think. You can always do this at another time. So you can kind of just go fold initially, go on again, get the fold and go. We're just going to work in our way from obviously the cater side directly back to the end, basically the base fit, where there is actually uh, obviously no sealed end. So it means any sort of external air that's actually caught in there is going to quite nice and neatly just stay in place and from here you can zip it up into the back. So the process is you have don't do it right first time you can always do it time and time again just to kind of get used to it. Turn how good you are sometimes you can even get the uh, poles back into the bag as well. But the only thing with that is the weight of it then is probably a bit more unmanageable. But that in principle is how you've got to pack away kind of your porch awning. If you want more questions queries, feel free to check a link below this video. It'll take you straight through to the website where we've got kind of all those traditional kind of pole awning situated. Uh, and also check out the YouTube channel on the kind of the pitching one we've done as well as a comparison. But very simple, it can easily be done by one person as you can see. It's just all down to a little bit of technique uh, and method. But always let us know what you think of it. And any other videos you'd love us to see or of us to do, it's always great to hear from you guys. By so there's always a comments box below which you can put your kind of feedback into. But thanks for watching, and uh, we'll hope to see you again soon.